Buzz Stones Airwaves. Hey, this is Buzz with episode number 19, part 2. And in this video, we're going to be explaining the programming of the FST2 radio, FRS radio, from Radiodity. As you will recall, if you saw the first part, episode 19, at the time I had done the video, the programming cable was not available yet. Well, it arrived in the mail today. Radiodity expressed it over to me, and I've installed it, and I'm going to run through that simple procedure with you and uh, show you what it looks like when you're connected to the radio and you're using the software program. If you're familiar with uh, programming radios, this will look, uh, using software, this will look pretty familiar to you. It's got the standard USB uh, connector on this end and uh, a ring tip type plug on this end, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and plug the USB part into my computer. Okay, so I have it plugged into the PC USB slot. At the time of this video, there are still no written instructions as to how all this works, so I had to figure it out. Uh, when I first tried it, I had the radio on and when I put the plug into uh, the jack here on the side of the radio on the right hand side the radio uh, would just everything on the display would come on and then after a little while it would just go blank well, what I figured out was actually it will work that way but actually you don't even have to have the radio on just leave the radio off and you plug this into uh, the headphone jack on the right side of the radio okay and I'm going to leave the radio here and show you what it looks like um, I've got the uh, program loaded up here on a PC and in a little bit here I'll show you uh, what it looks like when you're looking at the program but under settings I'll go to port and it says it's connected to port COM6 so I just say okay and then I'm going to do a, a read from the radio. When I click on that, it brings up a little uh, window. It says read, and it says it has a start button. So I push start. Okay, and it is reading the radio. Now you see the green LED light flashing there, showing you that it is indeed reading the radio. Okay, so it is now completed. It has read everything that is in the radio and displayed it in the software program. So I'll switch over to the software program at this time. Okay, we're looking at the software program. It's open now. And as I said, it's connected to the radio. And I already read data that was in the radio to this. But we're going to do it again so you can see what it looks like. Under settings, uh, it automatically put COM6 in there when it connected to my radio. So... Whatever shows up in there should be correct for your configuration. Then I go up here to program and I put read data from radio. Brings up this little dialog box, hit start, and you can see it's reading the radio. Okay, it's all in there. Now if you saw episode 19, part 1, You'll remember that these are the channels 1 through 22 uh, that come with an FRS GMRS radio. We got the receive frequencies and transmit frequencies, which are the same on this band. Uh, the place where you put your uh, encoder, decoder codes in, and then your transmit power. Now, you may also remember that in the original video some of these were set to high some were to low well I went in and changed them all to high just to show you that you can indeed change uh, the values there from the default values okay and another thing I did is you'll notice down here there's a channel 23 now I went ahead and put the next frequency uh, in line with the previous one in there just to see if it would take it and it did so as I theorized in video the first part of the video episode 19 you can go in here and add more channels to the radio now of course if you do that then it is no longer an unlicensed FRS radio 
you're going to need to have a license to operate on what other, what other additional frequencies you add to the radio. But you have the potential, it looks like, to, to go all the way up to 99 channels. Whether or not the radio will actually hold that many, I, I don't know. I haven't attempted it, but maybe that's something you could uh, you could look at. Also, in the first video, you'll remember I was having an issue with the NOAA weather stations. Well, it turns out the problem was the squelch level. It comes from the factory with a default setting of 3. I set it back to 1, and it works normally now. So when you momentarily hit the M, which is the monitor button on the radio, it will activate the local NOAA weather station. Uh, but you have to have that feature turned on using the uh, menu on the radio. Okay, also I had set the Roger tone to be on. I turned the beep off. That's uh, the beep it makes every time you would push a button and left the clear tail uh, checked. That's what's in the radio right now. It read from it. Now I can go over here and hit clear and take all that out. And if I want to set it back to uh, the original factory default settings, I just hit American and it loads all that in there. Okay. And then you would go up here to program and you put write data to radio. So we do that. And it's writing all the uh, default settings in there. And of course, you could save all kinds of configuration files using this program. And you could have your radio configured for uh, different things uh, that you wanted to use it for and very easily move back and forth. So see, now that I've put it back to the default settings, that extra channel, channel 23 that I put in there is no longer there. The radio is back to the factory default. So, um, you know, looks fairly straightforward, simple. There are no printed instructions yet. Um, and I've asked uh, Radio Oddity when those will become available. Hopefully that'll be soon. But in this video I showed you how it does work. And so if you choose to buy a pair of these uh, radios, uh, then you'll know how to use the programming. The program you download from their website, it's free. You do need to purchase the programming cable, which is $6.99, which to me seems reasonable. And of course these are all available at Radiodity. That's R-A-D-I-O-D-D-I-T-Y dot com. And this has been Buzz with episode number 19, part 2. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and share the video. And I'll see you down the dial.